Ladies and gentlemen, Second Ziba will now dedicate this song to the Liberian people. After a period of 133 years of one party system, it is the time that the Liberian people. My name is Moses Cole. I work for the LSCC. And again, we want to welcome you to the Civil Society Organization's Whistleblower and Witness Protection One Day Colloquium, Golden Key Hotel, SKD Post Complex, Barovia, Liberia, Wednesday, June 21st, 2017. Of course, we've gone through the first activity, the first and second activities. At this time, we'll ask for a short period of meditation uh, by the audience. Welcome remarks will be done by Commissioner Charles J. L. Gibson, Commissioner Oversight for Enforcement, the Bureau Anti-Corruption Commission. Honorable Vice President of Republic of Liberia, Joseph N. Bordai, Minister of Justice, Honorable Patrick Chu, Representative from the United Nations uh, Secretary General, Deputy Secretary General, uh, Ms. Tina Intelman from the EU, representing the ECOWAS. The representing the ambassador of ECOWAS here. Other guests, our facilitators, the acting chair and commissioners of LACC, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. The United Nations Convention Against Corruption, UNCA, and the Network of Anti-Corruption Institutions in West Africa, NASIWA, encourages state parties to adopt appropriate measures to protect whistleblowers, witnesses, experts, and victims. Similarly, under the ECWAS protocol on the fight against corruption, which came into force in 2015, state parties are mandated to adopt laws and other measures to ensure effective and adequate protection of persons who, acting in good faith, provide information on acts of corruption and other crimes as well as protect witnesses. Predicated upon, predicated upon this, NICIWA, with support of the United Nations Office Against Crime, UNODC, conducted a three-day whistleblower and witness protection workshop here in Monrovia, September 19 to the 21st, 2016. The workshop brought together over 80 participants and national stakeholders drawn from 12 West African countries. At the end of the workshop, Recommendations were made for countries to design programs and enact laws that will heighten the fight against corruption and other crimes and protect those who aid the fight by bringing these actions into light. One of LACC deliverables out of the international workshop was the enactment of the whistleblower and witness protection law. The Liberia Anti-Corruption Commission therefore constituted a national technical committee composing of anti-graft institutions, the Liberian Bar Association, Law Reform Commission, the Ministry of Justice, Civil Society, and the Catholic Justice and Peace Commission to develop a role model made for the enactment of the whistleblower and witness protection law for our country. As a result of this, the LACC will support the Legal Professional Development and Anti-Corruption Program in Liberia, Alpac a UCID project in Liberia, organized a three-day whistleblower witness protection workshop from March 1st to the 3rd, 2017 at the Corona Hotel. The objective was to review the existing whistleblower bill and draft witness protection policy to reflect the importance and present day reality, as well as synchronize and harmonize them into a single draft bill name and style, whistleblower and witness protection bill 2017. 
on April 20th, again, the concerned institutions and agencies known as the Technical Committee gather at the Carina Hotel with the aim of validating this document. At that validation, we were privileged to have representatives from the House of Representatives and from the Senate. Input was made by internal and external experts with the hope of producing a good fit document. Next is to present this important document to the legislative branch of government for enactment. But before this, we, the champions of this bill, led by LACC, have seen the need to seek the knowledge, awareness, <coughs> buy-in, and acceptance of the people of Liberia through the legislatures and requisite civil society groups, thus prompting this colloquium. The need to enact a whistleblower and witness protection law cannot be overemphasized. The passing of this bill into law is a significant step towards assisting the, corrupt, the corruption cancer that has been besieged our country, revenue, and resources. It is also pleasing to note that this bill will not only help LACC, but rather all law enforcement, DEA, Ministry of Justice, etc., in obtaining and protecting evidence in crime, criminal trials, and investigations. In other words, the witness protection and whistleblower bill will not be unique only to corruption cases, but all cases of the state that may see such importance. I would like to therefore welcome you all to this colloquium. So, Vice President, other dignitaries, on behalf of the LACC. Your Excellency, Vice President, Mr. Nimakwaka, members of the Liberia Legislature present here, I see my dear friend, uh, Representative Larry Nokwe from Niba County, Councilor Frederick Cheru, Minister of Justice, and Antonin Guerrero of the Republic of Liberia, Representative of the United Nations Secretary General Special Representative of Liberia, Madam Ambassador of the EU, Representative of the Echo Watch Ambassador to Liberia, a friend from the UCFA program, uh, leadership and members of the Liberia Civil Society organizations, Councillor Tiawan Gonglu, our lead facilitator, representative of the Liberia National Bar Association, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Please allow me to start by bringing Greetings from the Executive Chairperson of the Liberian Anti-Corruption Commission, the Board of Commissioners, and the General Staff of the LACC. I also want to say thank you very much for joining us at this very important occasion as we pull four strategies that will make it difficult for corrupt individuals and institutions to stay pillage our country. Effective whistleblower and strong witness protection mechanism are two important anti-corruption tools around the world. The draft whistleblower and witness protection law seek, among other things, to provide protection for whistleblowers and witnesses who might be willing to assist the LACC and other law enforcement agencies in their, in their work. An immediate intervention by the, labor, by the national legislature in support of the passage of the law we gave the LACC and other state actors the ammunition to fight corruption. We are all witnesses of massive recovery of loot in Nigeria, just a few months after the introduction of the same whistleblowing law in our country. Besides that recovery of loot, it will serve as an important deterrent for those who do things that lead our country, and we hold them accountable for that. The work of civil society and other state actors in the fight against corruption is actualizing the objective of this colloquium. The, packet, the passage of the act by both forces of the national legislature, civil society are important in generating the political will that will foster this development by engaging our national legislators about the importance of whistleblowing and witness protection. In this regard, I request you in the civil society and our friends in the media to collaborate with the LACC in raising the tempo at the level of the national legislature in seeing to it that this whistleblower and witness protection bill is enacted into law. 
Your Excellencies, Vice President Boaga, and other distinguished guests, this draft law is, critical, is a critical instrument for the LACC, but it has been lacking for a very, very long time. The passage of the Act by the National Legislature will lead to a system under which the Commission will be able to pay 5% of funds recovered to the whistleblower and also provide adequate protection to witnesses who, in their clear and conscious mind, will give us information and that will lead to direct protection, either reprisal from their jobs or other places. Therefore, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, your present year has two simple but important objectives. One, solicit the buy-in of the national legislature on the speedy passage of the Whistleblower and Whistle Protection Act. Two, create the awareness among civil society organizations and other state actors on the importance of whistleblowing and whistle protection in the fight against corruption. To ensure that it, this bill is passed by the national legislature because it is in the collective interest of our country and all parties concerned. Your Excellency Vice President Parker and distinguished guests, LECC is delighted by the level of support from the government of Liberia, our local and international partners, from the drafting phase through the preparation of the final document. We wish to extend special thanks to the U.S. government, to the UCLPA program, the United Nations Mission in Liberia, the Liberia National Bar Association, the Law Reform Commission, and our colleagues in the Integrity Forum, the GAC and the GC, for the tremendous show of support to this process. We want to extend our friends in the civil society for the work well done. Finally, let me say thank you for coming, and we seek your general support in this endeavor. I thank you. Strengthening our integrity institutions in order to become effective and efficient in the disguise of their duties has been our challenging task. And so efforts have been made from time to time to put in place regulations and statute in order to support this effort. Today I see that we have come here to discuss a proposed act aimed at strengthening the effort of the integrity institutions. The Whistleblower and Witness Protection Act, which is being discussed today, was discussed many years ago when I served in the Liberian Senate. That document is still lingering in the legislature. I do not know whether this is a new one or there's an amended one. <laughs> Let me therefore thank the Liberian Anti-Corruption Commission, the civil society, and our international partners for supporting this effort to be here today to discuss the bill which will help to protect whistleblowers and the witness, witnesses. But as we do so, let me warn you that in discussing the laws, we should place into it checkpoints Checkpoint that will not only encourage those laws, those whistleblowers and witnesses to bring forth information, but that will discourage them from bringing false information. But because this is key, the law passed must encourage all of us to be able to tell the truth and must also discourage all of us not to lie, not to tell what is not true. Today, as we discuss, the Minister of Justice 
welcome this effort because this will help our work. We are working with integrity institutions to fight corruption. <clears throat> Not only corruption, but all other crimes that make life difficult for existing. And therefore, I want to encourage all of us to open our minds, to spend our time, to devote our time and knowledge to this effort so that what comes out of here will stand the test of time. Let me again say thank you for your presence and hope that what comes out of this forum will stand the test of time and will help our nation. I'm also delighted to be here for this civil society colloquium on the draft whistleblowers and witness protection bill that is aimed at raising awareness among civil society actors and national actors. It's really important. We are gathered today to provide our support to the Liberia Anti-Corruption Commission as it spearheads the fight against corruption in Liberia. Corruption is the abuse of entrusted power for private gain. It corrodes the fabric of society. It undermines people's trust in political and economic systems, institutions and leaders and is a major obstacle to democracy and the rule of law. This is a global problem. And this is something that all nations have to take serious action with. I'm a South African. We also have our problems. Liberia continues to struggle with its fight against corruption, despite the establishment of the Anti-Corruption Commission in 2008. According to the Transparency International Corruption Index, Liberia, this is in 2016, Liberia ranked 90 out of 176 countries in the index and scored 37 out of 100 on the perceived level of public sector corruption. This is from the population. Accordingly, while there have been some welcome achievements, much more is still expected in, Liber in Liberia in the fight against corruption. And in this environment, the UN commands the Anti-Corruption Commission for having completed investigations of 22 cases to date, 17 of which were recommended for prosecution and for its efforts with ongoing cases under investigation and prosecution. Furthermore, the Commission must be... Indeed. <laughs> Furthermore, the Commission must be congratulated for its efforts that have brought us here today. The journey began in September last year when the Commission, in partnership with a network of national anti-corruption institutions in West Africa, conducted a regional workshop on whistleblowers and witness protection. This workshop sought to contribute to the ECOWAS regional strategy on whistleblower protection and increase knowledge about the systems to protect whistleblowers and witnesses. And one of the key recommendations of the workshop was that member states provide a legal framework for legal blower protection systems. The Commission, with the assistance of the government, the United Nations, and other national and international bilateral partners, has taken this recommendation forward with this drafting bill. And I think that deserves a clap for everyone around as well. Corruption can only be kept in check if all stakeholders and the government, the private sector, and civil society come together to develop standards and procedures they all support. Today's event signifies the coming together of stakeholders in Liberia, and I applaud members of the legislature and the executive, and members of civil society who found the time to be here. Your presence demonstrates your support to moving forward this draft legislation for the protection of men and women who answer the call of duty in reporting corruption in the public and private sectors in Liberia. The United Nations Convention Against Corruption also encourages governments to adopt appropriate measures to protect whistleblowers, witnesses, experts and victims, and the United Nations in Liberia is therefore greatly encouraged by this draft bill. We want to assure all of you that even as UNMAL is going, the United Nations who remain here will continue to support your efforts to ensure that it is passed and implemented into law. Thank you very much. I call Mr. Gerald Mailman, who is the chief of party of the UCL Park project in Liberia. Thank you. Good 
morning. Honorable Vice President, Honorable Attorney General, Minister of Justice, and all protocols observed. And I say that because it is important that we distinguish between <laughs> form and substance. And it is important that we are me meeting here today not only with members of, of the Senate, members of the House of Representatives, civil society, but also many of you that have been working in the fight against corruption. The fight against corruption is not only in form, it's not only in terms of speaking the words, but it is in actually applying the law. My friend just mentioned he was from South Africa and that South Africa still has a few problems. I'm American. We also have a few problems. What are those problems? Corruption is not a Liberian problem, a South African problem, a Chinese problem. It's a world problem. It's a problem for all of us who are citizens of countries. In the United States, every year, between 12 and 13,000 federal civil servants are charged with crimes of corruption. The last three governors of the great state of Illinois are presently serving their sentences. The only difference between the United States and so many other countries is that of those 13,000, 12 to 13,000 civil servants who are brought to justice each year, between nine and 10,000 of them start serving their sentences in penitentiary. And each one of them loses their assets. The IRS is always only one step behind the bailiff who comes to arrest in order to auction off the assets. So the fight against corruption is not talking about it. It is actually doing something about it. And that is why this event is so important. It comes at a moment in time when civil society and the government are cooperating to put in place structures that will allow Liberia to effectively fight corruption. Why is that important? My colleague again mentioned the location of Liberia on the scale of, of honesty or, or not, not corruptness that is published by IT. And Transparency International will tell you that economists have found that countries that are in the same range of, of ranking that Liberia is typically lose approximately 40% of their GDP to corruption, bribery, and other inefficiencies. Now, if I recall, Liberia's GDP is somewhere just over $2 billion per year. Add it up, perhaps $800 million per year is lost through inefficiencies, corruption in procurement, in every stage of life, in every activity of government, in every private activity. 40%, that is a lot of money that citizens and the government can do a lot with in terms of addressing all the shortcomings of which you are so aware. When it comes to the whistleblower law and, and witness protection program, as well as other laws, such as the, the asset declaration regulations that have now come into force, they are all important tools, but they are only tools. And unless you pick up the hammer, you will never be able to complete building your table. You need to do something concrete in, in implementing, and that is, of course, why it is so important that the LECC is acting and is, is moving forward in the way that was described, and so important to have the presence of the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General, since it is the Ministry of Justice that in most cases prosecutes the cases that are prepared by the LECC. It's also important to have civil society here, especially at this critical juncture when Liberians once again go to the polls and, and vote for their representatives. Interesting to have so many members of the legislature present today who obviously are considering a number of laws that are critically important for the development of Liberia. But certainly, when you consider the cost of corruption, this law must be, will be very high on your list of priorities as they go out once again and face the country and answer questions about what their role has been in the fight against corruption. Our last president of the United States, President Barack Obama, said, he is too eloquent, so I have to read what he said. Often the best source of information about waste, fraud, and abuse in government is an existing government employee committed to public integrity and willing to speak out. Such acts of courage and patriotism, which can sometimes save lives and often save taxpayer dollars, 
should be encouraged rather than stifled. We need to empower federal employees as watchdogs of wrongdoers and, par and par our partners in performance. The US has changed leaders, but the message is extremely clear. The whistleblower law and witness protection law is essential if Liberia is going to control bribery and corruption that are endemic in so many aspects of life. The Commissioner mentioned that the draft law proposes a 5% remuneration for the whistleblower. And some of you probably cringed a little bit and said, why should someone be paid in order to do the patriotic duty? I agree. If the whistleblower wishes to make a donation of 5% to a charity, especially due to civil society, that would be a wonderful gesture. But at the same time, since we already talked about the cost of corruption and the cost of bribery and the cost in procurement, a 5% remuneration is a very reasonable amount to pay for for breaking the back of this, of this habit and of this tremendously high cost of society. Again, in the United States, the IRS will pay up to 10% of the recovery to anyone who turns in their boss for cheating or their employers for cheating. So if the government recovers, think of the impact. You, you have a person working in this hotel or any hotel or any store who could come to the IRA, to the LRA and say, you know, my boss puts about 50% of the money that comes in straight into his pocket. He doesn't pay taxes on it. And if the LRA recovers, that employee will likely not be employable very often, very soon, by other people, by her boss or by others. That employee should be protected. She is acting as a patriot, as President Obama said, and is acting in a position of recovering money for the people of Liberia. So, what we're doing here today is nothing new. The United States has had a whistleblower law since 1989. Every single OECD country has a whistleblower law, and it is essential in order to drive economic growth. So, if you are interested in economic growth, in a better life for the citizens of Liberia, I urge you not only to, to work to pass these, these measures into law, but also to urge your government to strongly support the implementation of those laws and the prosecution of those who are corrupt and who take advantage of the rest of the population in Liberia. Thank you. Your Excellency Vice uh, President Wakai, members of the legislature, Honorable Minister of Justice, uh, commissioners of uh, LAC, uh, fellow members of the diplomatic community, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, your presence today uh, means that you take uh, the issues that are, exist here around corruption very seriously. And uh, of course, I'm uh, very delighted uh, to, uh, to be uh, participating in the opening of, of today's event. Over the last decade or so, uh, the European Union and together, together with other donors have um, uh, participated and contributed substantively to the uh, fight against corruption in Liberia. Um, our participation and contribution includes the creation of the General Auditing Commission, the Liberian Anti-Corruption Commission, the Public Procurement and Concessions Commission. And uh, while there have been certain successes, obviously there are also failures and a lot, a lot remains to be done. From our perspective, how can you build schools? How can you build roads? How can you contribute to electricity? How can you put money into elections? How can you put money into healthcare if you know that corruption is rampant? You know that whatever you do, these efforts are going to have limited success, if at all. Um, it's true that corruption is a global problem. It exists everywhere. It exists in South Africa, in the US, and even in the European Union. Um, but the big difference is that in most countries where corruption exists, the reports about corruption get investigated and adjudicated 
some people go to prison. And also a very big difference uh, between Liberia and most of the other countries that we spoke about is that these other countries do not uh, rely on donor assistance as much as Liberia does. So your responsibility is twofold. It's the responsibility vis-a-vis -vis your own taxpayers who pay taxes, but also the responsibility vis-a-vis -vis the taxpayers of the European Union, of the US, and others who are contributing to the development of your country. Um, any corruption uh, requires strong institutions, and we have contributed to these institutions. It um, needs uh, a very strong legal framework, and the uh, whistleblower and witness protection bill is a step in that direction. But it also requires a uh, very strong political will. It requires daily work. It's a struggle. And uh, of course, uh, from the civil society and, and from activists, from people who fear for Liberia, it would require a lot of courage. It's sometimes hard to uh, say bad things about um, people who are senior or people who are supervisors, but uh, this needs to be done. And of course, as the Minister of Justice said, uh, what, uh, what is said needs to be also true. So uh, I hope that. Uh, the members of the legislature will uh, take the passage of this whistleblower and witness protection bill close to their heart. It's still, uh, there is still time to, to do it. But I also hope that all those who are here present and also others will take the fight against corruption as a priority. Uh, it is certainly in the minds and hearts of, of uh, my delegation and of my superiors uh, in Brussels as we look at how Liberia is developing and as we look at how to uh, continue our support to Liberia. Thank you very much. Uh, not yet too much to hands by. So this is my second time hearing uh, at this location when this draft was first uh, presented to the cross-section of civil society, senators and representatives from the strategic committees were invited. And like in the case of other integrity-related institutions or legislatures, we always put ourselves at the disposal of the executive, the apparatus of the executive branch, to foster the cause of this kind of issues at our own workplace. Because if we must be in this country, it must be built on a strong foundation. And it is this soft component, this software. You can buy all the guns, all the guidance, uh, provide good code rules, but if this institutional framework, institutional framework are not put in place, uh, you would rather find it difficult. So, again, we are here to tell our people as chairman of governance, we definitely will play a role in uh, having the price to take a glimpse at this document. We do our best to make sure that uh, it is accelerated at our level. Like most of the integrity people related bills that you hear of, stop by the legislature, who know as they have passed the law of the government act. The Gender Domestic Violence Act, the Census, everything, we did five acts, but the joint resolution, we were the first to call it our 49, how did we need it? We did it with God, the first 53. So, everything that we need to do to push this country forward as far as creating this kind of enabling environment is concerned. We normally accelerate at our level, and whenever it comes, we are not, we are color plan, we are political party plan, we put the interest of the country first. So, we will let you rest assured today again that whenever we see this, we will do our best. I always tell people, let's pass the law. This is not constitution, that's the only one everybody needs to stay on line to vote for changes. If this is passed, if we are probably we can change it. When the need arises, especially when we have a flexible 
chief executive, my guys, I'm the ear of the people. I was willing to call people and say, tell them, what is this? So we had to give you the assurance. The only problem I have is the law is calling for the establishment of a witness protection or whatever agency. I thought we were gravitating towards more government. Why we can't ingratiate this in the LACC or the Justice Ministry? Instead of creating entities again, because they might be, they, they, they use, they use some resources only. Because you're talking about infrastructure and logistics. And managing these things are problems. They were, I will be very critical of the And you don't have a I had this copy when it was called Home Group presented before I had the copy already and I'm reading it again. We're talking again about uh, giving five percent of, of what is redeemed to the whistleblower. What if the corruption is not financially related? For example, if nepotism is practice, if I give a job, the panel rated somebody as performing hard in an interview and I took it and give it to somebody who is related to me or to other men. What is the money there that the wizard blue is going to get five percent? So whoever is going to administer this must put some money there as an inducement, not necessarily five percent. But you know it's fair to say that in a system where money is redeemed. But in a system where money is not redeemed, there must be something to to, 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 to serve as a motivation for more wizard blue. Well I think this is a good argument. I think we should forge it at our level. You can raise that show. Thank you very much. In some countries, it is negligible. In some countries, 
It is institutions, the legal framework that we put in place, like the EU and others have already said. How many convictions have we made? How many people have we arrested? How many prosecutions have we done? I'm a Nigerian, and I'm happy to inform you that if there's anything that the Nigerian government has been able to do in the last two years, it is the severe punishment, it is the legal framework, it is carrying the Nigerian people along in the fight against corruption. The issue of the 5% of proceeds looted money to be given to whistleblowers. It was part of the law. And today, we are beginning to see the fruits. Politicians, <coughs> bureaucrats, were hiding money in toilets, in symmetries. And because of the publicity that has been given to this, because of the motivations, because also the faith-based organizations are also part of this crusade. It is not limited to the integrity institutions. Everybody is involved in the fight. And that is why where Nigerian government is making a huge success. I'm sure some of us must have read one of our integrity institutions for prey to the extent that the director general of the institutions and his family was found with over 50 something million US dollars. Today, the money has been confiscated by the government. And examples are bound. So what we need, what the, what the parliament needs to do first and foremost is to ensure the passage of the whistleblower and witness protection act. The second thing is a commitment on the part of all of us. But it is not just passing the act. We must all resolve to see to the implementation of it at the community level, at the family level. The faith-based organization must join the anti-corruption fight. If we do not, passage of the act will not solve the problem. And uh, talking about transparency and accountability, we public officials, we also have an important role to play. And I want to commend the fresh dynamism that has been brought to bear with the asset declaration by the President of the Republic of Nigeria. It's the work of development. is expected to strengthen the conviction that corruption will not be allowed to thrive. It is also significant to know that this declaration of assets, which is not new, is in tandem with the regular provisions of Equals Protocol of Good Governance, Transparency, and Democracy. So it is emphasized that a lovable and courageous decision will be evaluated by other public functionaries in Liberia, as well as other leaders in the sub region, with a view to addressing corrupt practices and encouraging transparency and accountability. Equals for many the Liberian government for the interest it has demonstrated in enacting necessary legislation aimed at fighting this menace. We call on the pilot to speedily pass the whistle blowing and protection of whistleblowers act to encourage members of the public to give truthful information on corrupt officials. The Attorney General made a valid point. In Nigeria, if a whistleblower gives false information, it has a penalty. It happened recently, a whistleblower gave a false information against the deputy senate president of Nigeria. And the law enforcement agent moved into the residence of the deputy senate president. His house was ransacked. At the end of the day, the was found. The whistleblower was charged for what? 
I don't want to give one to the dissent. <laughs> so it is important that whistleblowers must know that uh, there are two sides of the coin. If you don't say the truth, you will be penalized. If you say the truth, you will get your five percent. <laughs> It is part one day that the good number of countries together with our kinds of have been able to acknowledge the indispensable role of whistleblowers and have gone a long way to account them the necessary legal and administrative protection. This informs the recent successful arrests as I mentioned, Nigeria and Ghana. The success story regarding the Nigeria has been due to polarity support between whistleblowers, the Economic Financial Crime Commission, and the financial incentive that is guaranteed by the government for whistleblowers, which who are paid law enforcement agents of credible leads to uncover stolen or money laundering activities. I was heard that if like that the corruption commission is to succeed, tangible levels must be made to ensure 100% protection for whistleblowers and create other incentives. The representative member board, in case we do not have huge money, because incentive is not necessarily financial, we must also look for other means to reward whistleblowers. By celebrating, let's celebrate our own models. Let's let it be invited for proper recognition. Let it be issue a certificate, a certificate of distinction, a certificate of merit. This will uh, motivate the young people in the community that the government, the people who cares about those who say the truth those who are transparent in running and managing the affairs of the country. So as you are aware, we still play an important role, even though the task is very risky. And in most cases, at their own personal peril, there is a need therefore for reasonable protection through legal frameworks that guarantee their protections and confidentiality. Let me at least Johnson, all officials of NSCC and other intelligence institutions to resist temptation from public officials and remain above board. As the public will continue to watch your lifestyles, which must be commensurate with your salary and income. Corruption exists where you have heat disparity, heat discrepancy between work and wealth. For the integrity institutions, you are the worst of all. And for whistleblowers, for corruption to succeed, it is important that you also remain above all the time. In addition, public awareness campaigns are necessary to enable citizens to realize that anti corruption campaign is a patriotic responsibility that won't be supported by all well meaning librarians. The more people are aware, of the danger of corrupt practices, the better enlightened they become, and the more their favorable response to work development in its anti corruption campaign. The civil society organizations and partners are therefore required to continue to work closely with the NACC in its public enlightenment campaign, aimed at changing cultural perceptions and public attitudes towards. And who stood to us. Still on raising awareness, the general public will be continually sensitized and encouraged to report suspicious illicit transfers and movement of dirty money within the country. Collaborative partnership with both banking and non banking sectors must also be encouraged and consolidated. It is hoped that this initiative will be extended to a higher level. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in closing, let me also stress that everyone on this path will continue to provide 
for the very support to the Liberian Corruption Commission. It is delightful to recall that barely a month ago, Airports organized the well attended plenary and ministerial meeting of the Intergovernmental Action Group against money laundering of West Africa, which we call GIAPA. And it is instructive that His Excellency the Vice President declare this meeting to open. The meeting enabled member states to discuss the challenges of corruption, money laundering, and terrorism financing, as well as provide solutions. And it recommended, among others, the need to call corruption and prosecute heavy officials of the government without fear or favor, as well as confiscate all assets so acquired in the process to serve as a deterrence to others. In this noble campaign against corruption, you can count on Edwards for the necessary support. I thank you all for your kind attention. I think it's almost to invite the Honorable President Mabwai and Senior Vice President to come and apply the video for the people in the The other thing I'm going to share is the RSCC, the State Commissioners of the RSCC, and the Representative of the Legislature. Our Minister of Justice, our partners, the representative of the Senate, the special representative of the Senate General, General, representative of the American Embassy, <coughs> our European headquarters, representative. Members of the civil society, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I will find it an honor to be here with the LACC. It's my pleasure to be back today to be highlighted as a critical necessity for the protection of whistleblowers whose roles are devoted in the fight against corruption. We were last together last May 2015, and we moderated the high level of non-tail and corruption. Even before that, I had the privilege of sharing the time with you as your head of this the ceremony is marking the commemoration of the International Corruption Day, and I serve as a proxy for the president. I'm not excited to be here today because to exchange views on the essence of protection of whistleblowers in our collective cause of rendering the flight against the Russian world. I listened to the kind of material and brought to my attention some uh, practical you know, reality when I was uh, the manager at LPMC in Local. And we had a clinic. And we had to hire a doctor. And we said to the doctor, for every time he conducted a hernia operation, we paid $75 extra. It was a short time that the doctor told me he had discovered 20 hernia cases. <laughs> And I said to him, we didn't ask you to go and look at them. We didn't want the patient to come to you. He <laughs> said, so you know what it means? <laughs> so, I'm excited to be here for us to achieve views 
on this issue of the whistleblower. In all fairness, we have to acknowledge that as we make the home in this effort to subdue the impact of limited corruption in our country, we remain resolved to break the chain of corruption, thereby refining our governance and financial management systems. Doing this will help us to provide good education, health care and delivery services, and social protection for all. I look in the lives, and I'm saying this something I've been thinking about seriously. I feel the lives that every time we sit with our partners, we are either thanking them or thanking them. In the midst of all the resources that we have, we have to understand too that whatever you do, you have to resent their integrity. We are blessed as a nation. We have the resources. But no matter who is the person is or the country is, all the time they thank you and ask you that you go. I mean, I've seen this, but the bottom of my hand is something that I've been thinking about. And I'm very much convinced that if we manage what we have, well, we don't have to be nervous. I went to the States and I, in Parliament, and I visited uh, a daycare at home and I met in a wheelchair a Rebecca Tucker. And I said to myself, if we had provided these kind of services for ourselves, we'll be here. You only change the rules when you're in the game.
So we now share my other steps that we are taking as a government <laughs> to reinforce by the issuance of the president to executive orders and then order number 38 in 2012, executive order number 55 in 2013 for the members of the executive branch of government to declare their asking the support of our own order drive to ensure that those coming to public players do so with the highest degree of transparency and accountability. Other notable strides we have registered include <coughs> the with the members of the legislature for the passage of the Freedom of Information Act and now the National Code of Conduct, which was finally passed in June 2014. So that was recently upheld by the Panama Supreme Court of Atlanta. We have continued to plan out to the adoption of the National Anti Corruption Strategy, led by the Government Commission in partnership with civil society, the revamping of the Gender Audit Commission, the establishment of the Public Procurement and Conservation Commission, PPCC, the Liberian Extractive Intelligent Transparency Initiative. The internal audit agency. That he was a Rwanda driving a taxi and he had hidden a chiplet and he wanted to show <coughs> the ambition of the way in a car and the driver said, Did you throw that out? You were in punishment. And he had the driver. There's no police around here who would arrest me and the driver said I would. <laughs> Sometimes we have to take the initiative to correct some of these. That driver was a picture. So to this we should also have the financial intelligence unit, the Liberian Revenue Authority, and the Ronald Reform Commission among others. Today we continue to have the foreign work on the whistleblower and witness protection effort. We suddenly have been hard work in pushing this across the best to allow them to participate in the law. In collaboration with the partners and stakeholders, we conducted a three-day whistleblower and witness protection workshop. In September last year. In March of this year, you purchased the other anti craft institution, civil society organizations, and the Liberia National Bank Association to host a three day whistleblower. Business protection website. We produce the draft whistleblower and witness protection here. You even have a validation website on the draft bill last April. Our purpose today is to send the commission, is to solicit the buying the members of the legislature and further raise the awareness. Among civil society activities, <coughs> actors on this national cause. For my part, I need my support so for all the measures that will go into a whole to fight against corruption. I just came from Lofa a few days ago. As we are pushing the cars out of the dirt, I found three coins, one U.S. on the cars and then two Liberian on the cars and pieces. Right where I was thanking those who pushed the car, and they remind me that they had been 20 years ago since we saw that, and those roads are still the same. I don't know if we can prime ourselves of good groups just because we want to make some fast money. We are 170 years old. And I 
house to your people. If you are 15 years old, you are in the second grade, but seven years old, they call you children, but you have to ask yourself, am I a child? You're not. <laughs> the country is 170 years old. Everything we talk about today should have happened about 90 years ago. We are preparing ourselves because everyone wants to make quick money, forgetting that there are so many who will never ever come to the forefront to do that. So I do believe the issue of corruption is an issue that we need to be. The issue of whistleblower needs to be protected. The extent to which a person witnessing crime feels safe and secure and determines the extent to which a cooperation and effort to expose and prosecute perpetrators. It should therefore be simple in order for all well intentional fighters of corruption to lend full support to institutions. Set up measures and safeguards to protect whistleblowers and witnesses. Bear in mind uh, the advice given by the Minister of Justice. So let me urge our honorable legislators that we call the promulgation of the whistleblower and witness protection and matters the full and ordinary attention that they. I should, in the same breath, also remind all of that over all fight against corruption. So, the corruption demands the best of corruptions in ourselves at full soldiers in this fight. We can talk about it, but we must act. Put it more pointedly, one who steps forward to fight. The vice must be set or set, be inoculated from the habits of indulging in the same condition. I have been asked many times to speak at this gathering, and sometimes I ask myself, do I feel competent to talk on me? Because all of us must be mindful. That it is the collective action of Liberians that we are able to provide those resources that we need to develop after 170 years. This is something that should give us something to think about. So let me thank you again for the invitation. The God continues to strengthen us. This what it calls to refine and redeem our society that is coming in our lives. I want to thank you and I wish you all well. And I pray that one day we'll see the wisdom and ensure that we need to the best service for our country. fight against corruption a little bit as Solicitor General. And I remember some of the cases that really show that corruption is complicated. It, it's, you know, corrupt acts are committed in secrecy and it is important to bring those who find themselves close to corruption or corruption acts have been committed or fraud or other wrong conduct in government to inform the act of those who have the legal authority to deal with the law enforcement, Ministry of Justice, LACC, and all of that. We have one case coming out of a bank, and someone was appointed as to control the SWIFT code. That person functioning the bank was to receive uh, uh, transfers from abroad and to credit accounts. 
and find it happening in two blanks. And this guy was making maybe six or seven hundred dollars, but he was living large. He had cars, he had houses, he was just spending. And one of his colleagues in the bank said, Is there something wrong with me? This guy must say I'm making the same salary. How come he's living so well? And he was widening our addiction today, the whistleblower in that case. He went to me and he went to him and said, look, someone is selling a house for I think forty thousand dollars. And he said, but can you talk to him to reduce it to twenty-five thousand dollars? And I will buy it. So he said, ah. So this man is able to buy a house from cash down to five thousand dollars and seven hundred dollars in the bank. And so then he increased the man's suspicion more. He said, but ask him to create a, an account at this bank. Or if you know someone who has an account at the bank, you can let him <laughs> So I can transfer the money to that account. Then the uh, suspicion became, he said, okay. The next day he brought his girlfriend's account number in the bank. And said, this is the account number that you can send it to the five thousand dollars to be said. On that Monday, he said, but when is the money will be in that account? Sure enough, on Wednesday morning, the money was in the account. Then the whistleblower contacted the controller and the bank examiner and other in the bank and said, I am 100% sure that this man is using his position to get money in his bank. Then they started the investigation. And Father that he was putting money in his girlfriend's account. We got involved in the investigation. CID, I had a team of CID that investigated. And we got two of the girlfriends. We charged all of them. He and the girlfriend were charged in front of them. So we then pushed them with the girlfriends that. If you are prepared to testify, we will not first testify against you, and you can be state witnesses against this one man. One of the, the girlfriends had a savings account. So what he used to do was to transfer money to that. Another one had a checking account, and he would just have to check written, and then he will come on the counter and ask his friends or tell us, oh, help my friend with cash or check. The first girl said she was afraid because she only had $5,000 in her account. And the first time she saw $40,000, I had no $40,000 in her account. So don't worry, I got a friend in, in London who sent me money. Anyway, we got to go picture in our case because they told me this to testify in court before the jury. They testified in court before the jury. And so, because of that, we got a confession. That is why it's important to protect people who have direct access to the information of corruption records. Even now, for the suspicion, was not sufficient for conviction. But they took the beneficiaries who were part of the Quran Act to testify. And this can only happen if they can even improve if there's protection for them. We provided a provider protection and said we will not prosecute you. And so you will not go to jail. What are they happening in the bank that you used to work with? Both cases discuss a direct uh, witnesses who got confession cases. So this law has two parts. One for witness protection and part B for I mean part A for whistleblower protection and part B for witness protection. The two go hand in hand. It is based on whistleblower information that we get witnesses as we do. Ladies and gentlemen, Zach and Ziba, 
will now dedicate this song to the Liberian people. After a period of 100 years, 